Hello guys, on the last episode, we finally started the Shaman grind for the Warhammer full time, but during the grinding process, about 1000 kills in, I realized I was using up a lot of darts, so I was deciding to work on Dranslayer 2, because the Assembler would actually help me save a lot of these darts, and also would help me kill Shams a little bit faster, since it is more accuracy and damage bonus. So that's what we're working on right now. We're trying to get the stats and all the requirements for Translator 2. So I just finished up almost everything. I just got 60 thieving. And that is all of my skilling stuff uh, pretty much wrapped up for Translator 2. So all I gotta do is one quest, I believe, which is the Tale of Two Cats. And then we are ready to go for some Translator 2 content and Vorkath, of course. Finally, all the requirements are done, baby. Where is it? Translator 2? Check everything. Everything, it is crossed off. Beautiful. What can I put this on? Herbaler? Yes, I'm, of course I'm up for the Dragon Slayer 2 challenge, brother. Except this time, my stats are kind of whack. But it's still pretty good. still pretty solid. My gear is probably way worse, honestly. That was an easy fight. The uh, Zami Hasta did a pretty good job, so. So I'm currently on the Vorkath part of the quest, and let me just show you guys a sneak preview of the setup that I'm going to be using for the actual Vorkath fights for the Assembler. So as you can see, it's mainly a melee setup. My main weapon is going to be the Zamaki and Hasta. I've actually never used Hasta before at Vorkath, but I do have a lot of experience mailing Vorkath on my other accounts, so. And you'll see this really interesting weapon that I'm wearing. That's the Bone Dagger. And uh, I'll elaborate more on that once we actually do the real Vorkath fights. Because yeah, let's just get this quest done. Yes! Okay, now we can move on. I have to prepare for the final fight, which is Galvig. And uh, luckily for me, I do have a lot of Addy Bolts from AFK Wyverns that I can use to make some Ruby Bolts. So that's going to be my primary... Uh, tactic against the boss is ruby bolts and then probably on like the last 20% uh, or something I'll switch to diamond bolts alright let's just try with this setup you know pretty simple max range ruby bolt switch diamond bolt switch uh, maybe one brew for emergency a bit of prayer anti fire and range bot so emergency telly we should be good Ooh, yikes. Oh my god, right off the bat with a ruby bolt. Oh my god, another ruby bolt. <laughs> I'm just ruby bolting this bastard, dude. I love it. This is so good. Alright. Alright, alright. 42 HP, 13 HP. Ru Come on, diamond bolt. Diamond bolt. Let's go. What? 1 HP? Seriously? Ow, ow, don't man with me. 1 HP, come on, dude. That's such a troll. You're dead. You are so dead. Yes. Easy, dude. Still had like two Manta Rays left. So, not bad, you know, not bad, not bad. The Ruby Pulse, though, went so hard in the beginning. So, let's just say I got a little lucky. I might, I might have needed, you know, some good RNG to pull that off. Alright, Mr. Alec, I've slayed dragons upon dragons. Give me the right to enter this place. Okay, it's time to get that little, uh... Thank you, friend, you helped us fill our library of knowledge. Secrets that you have uncovered are worth more than any coin. It is an honor to welcome you into the Miz Guild. Let's go! 5 quest points, 25k smith XP, all that good stuff. Do I get any levels? I don't get a single level from that, wow. That's so nice, though, man. So, so nice. Main thing, obviously, is to do forecast, so... But it's, it's nice to have this unlock though. But yeah man, time to get the uh, Alva's Assembler uh, starting tomorrow, work on that grind. I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a blue D-high shield because that's the best I can make with my current given stats. The next best one is at 87 fletching. So I'm gonna stick with this, this is not bad. So do I just combine them? Alright, I think it takes twice as long, no? Oh, not bad. Blue D high shield, really good stuff here. All right, so clean attack bonuses. Put this on, and I get five range bonus. Better than nothing. 
I was hoping to get a Armado God Book or a Zami God Book, but I just haven't gotten any good pages for that. Alright, so this is my typical gear for Wyverns, right? Mind Shield. But I'm gonna have the Booty High Shield. So 190 range bonus, really good. I can only put this on after I diagro, but after that, you know, 10 minutes of that, I get to wear that new shield. And yeah, kick some Wyvern AFK ass. Get this XP real quick. Yes, 81 farming. Awesome. I can grow dragon fruit trees. That's cool. Another shaman clue. Please be good. Oh, ancient yeah, boots. Wait, uh, I already have one of these, but red cavalier. Okay. That's cool. Another unique item. Damn, it's one mil? This thing's one mil. Oh yeah, the high boots are still one mil. Popping, dude. Thanks. Oh yeah, one of the better unlocks for the miss skill is oh the ability to just enchant any dragonstone jewelry. So nice, man. Not having to go to different places for that, so it's really good. Alright, it's time to go and actually get these 50 kills, or maybe if I get lucky, you know, even less. For this assembler, we're gonna do the melee setup. Just cause I I really don't want to do rune crossbow without a leave void, so I'm just gonna go and try out this main stuff. Should be okay. I should bring my dagger with me though. But I pre pod it as you can see. And yeah. I'm just gonna get kicked out to Vorkath and basically I'll teleport to Clan Wars to leave Vorkath and reset my stats and then teleport back to Lunar Owl using my POH, you know, for the round trip. Let's give this a try. Alright guys, it's time to talk about the secret weapon. Well, it's maybe not secret to some of you guys, but honestly, I really didn't even think about the effectiveness of the Bone Dagger at bossing when it comes to mid-level accounts. So, obviously, I don't have like amazing special attack weapons at the moment. I don't got stuff like a Dran Warhammer, I don't got a BGS, all that fancy stuff to, you know, usually tackle bosses right, right at the start of the fight. So the Bone Dagger is a really cool weapon, just think of it as a budget Vandal's God Sword. Let me explain to you what the Bone Dagger does. In simple terms, whatever the Bone Dagger special attack does for damage, it will lower the opponent's defense by that much. So if I hit a 20 on the monster, it'll lower its defense by 20. So it almost works exactly like a BGS, except BGS hits way higher and yeah. but. This weapon is really interesting because the special attack will always land if it's the first hit of the fight against anything. So right at the beginning of Warcraft fight or right at the beginning of any boss fight, as long as I use the special, it should land something. Now don't be fooled, you might tell me that, oh I still see a zero from time to time. Well that's because damage calculation works in a weird way. So when you attack something, you either will hit a miss or you'll hit a damage roll. However, even if you go to the damage roll, there's still a chance you'll hit a zero because it's zero to whatever the max hit is, right? So for example, let's say my bone dagger uh, maxes at like 26. That's what I've seen so far. So that means even if it activates the special attack damage roll, it'll still roll anywhere from zero to 26. So one out of 27 times, it'll still hit a zero, but 26 out of 27 times, which is a vast majority, it'll hit something. And uh, because I max around, I think 26, 27, the average hit I will hit the boss with is about 13, 14 defense reduction, which is pretty noticeable because guess what? This boss has an insane amount of hit points, right? So this is going to be a, a very long fight. Being able to lower Vorkast defense on average by like 13 to 14 defense is actually really nice. I'm probably saving, you know, somewhere over 10 plus seconds because like, from what I've seen so far, the kills can either last 2 minutes to 5 minutes even. Another useful place I could think of using the Bone Dagger at might be at Bandos because what if you don't have a Dragon Warhammer, right? But you still want to have like something to lower its defense. So that's something to think about. But overall, I love this weapon um, in lieu of the Bandos Gosser and Dragon Warhammer. You know, this definitely has some interesting niches. Oh, there we go. First kill. Very nice, dude. It's not even that bad, honestly. 246, dude. Not even that bad, honestly. I, I think we had some pretty decent RNG kill there, but um, I feel like I can probably do multiple kill trips, you know, even with this setup here, so I think I'm going to go for that. Just just go for a few kills per trip, you know. 226, new PB. Let's get it. There we go. Oh my god, this is probably my slowest kill 
4 minutes and 57 seconds. Okay, so this is probably like the super slow range. Sometimes, you know, I can get a 2 minute kill, and other times I'll get like a 5 minute kill. That seems to be kind of how it is. Oh, that was kind of nasty to navigate. I got stuck between all the different poison pools right there. Whew, that was a little scary, man. Low HP. Come on. Dragon Bolt's nice. My first Dragon Bolt drop. These are going to be super useful in the future. Going to use that shit probably at the Inferno and stuff. New personal best. Let's go. 220. Alright, I did 20 kills today. Pretty good rewards here. Got some uh, Rat Talismans. I don't think I'll be ever using that, but... Yes, first 20 kills, man. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Oh shit, I just hit a 46. Oh baby, that might be my max hit honestly. Some kills are just so slow. 30 kills though. Alright, this inventory is so dumb bro. 8 rune kai shields. Oh man. Do you know how many ice trolls I would have to kill for 8 rune kai shields? A lot. Too many. Ooh, that was a rough one now. Oh, forecast set! Oh, Jesus. Oh man. I was trying to go for 50 kills, man. It was I was having actually a lot of fun here, but uh, nice, dude. Awesome, awesome. I got my forecast set already. 10 kills early. All right, that's actually really awesome, dude. Oh, whoa, one HP. Yikes. Fuck me, dude. I better not die. Alright, I fucking survived, boys. I'm double eating up. Not sure how fast this was, but it felt really fast. Oh, personal best. Let's go. Sub two minutes. That's insane, dude. Wow, that's a 23 second PB right there. Huh. I decided to go for the 50 kills and, of course, getting the new uh, Fate Hugger pit. Oh, I died. Well, see you later. But yeah, uh, it's worth it. Might as well, right? 50 kills for the guarantee hit. Now it's time to make two assemblers. That's gonna be so nice. Let's get it, man. I'll be back though, probably to do some more forecast in the future, cause um I'm gonna definitely want some dragon bolts for phase two stuff like Inferno Cave and probably Armadillo and stuff, so and maybe some raids to use that, but yeah, this is good. It took me about two hours and twenty minutes to get thirty Vorkath kills. So I'm getting like thirteen Vorkath kills an hour or so. I have all the goodies. To make the Alva's Assembler. Let's buy two of these. Oh, yo, that's awesome, dude. All I gotta do is check this off. And yeah, all what's left for phase one. Void, of course. Western Diaries. Warhammer for items. And then just a few skills and diaries haven't done. And that's it, you know, we're done. And then we move on to phase two. So close. So, so close. But it's nice to have this checked off now. Alright, let's have a little bit of a stack comparison sake for those of you that don't know too much about the assembler. So here's the assembler right now that I'm wearing, but we'll start off with the accumulator, right? I got 82 range with accumulator and no range strength extra from this. Now if I put on the assembler, we get ourselves an extra 4 range accuracy, which is nice as hell. 86 and you get extra range strength too. I think it's 2.5 actually, but um, if I get the Xanite Necklace, I think I can get extra damage probably with that stack. But yeah, I think I should be able to get an extra damage regardless some of the times. But yeah, the biggest thing though besides the stats is the fact that I don't have to pick up darts anymore. It picks up all the darts that wouldn't otherwise get destroyed upon impact. So yeah, no more having to pick up darts. This floor is clean as hell. No more darts on the ground. Before it was a mess. Now it's like only a little bit of a mess. Nice and clean. I know exactly what I want to pick up and it's not darts. Not having to pick up darts is actually huge because it directly impacts how much faster I can kill the shamans. So I am now killing the shamans or you could say getting a bit more shaman kills per hour. Every time that I spent picking up darts, which was a good amount, meant less time that I could be spending attacking the shamans. I also save a bit of prayer as well because every time I pick up darts, I lose some prayer along the way just because I have to interrupt my flicking. For the next few days or even weeks, if I get really, really unlucky, 
I'm going to be spending most of my time at shamans. The assembler is definitely motivating me a little bit because it's saving me a bit more supplies. So we are currently around three to four thousand kills, already close to the drop rate. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like the video. And if you want to stay up to date, feel free to subscribe to the channel as well and click on the bell. And uh, otherwise, I hope to see you guys soon with another video in a few days. Thank you guys so much for watching.